Okay, so here we have another example. This one's a little bit more involved. Um, this is about uh, Kepler, who was um, a mathematician and astronomer um, long ago. And uh, this is not about his study of planets. This is about his wedding. So uh, back in his day, wine was sold um, by the length of the submerged part of the rod that you see in the picture. So what do we mean by that? So here you have a barrel with, now it starts off with a cork plugged in it. What they would do is they would knock it over on its side, take out the cork, and they would take a rod, so that's what this guy is right here, and they would drop it into the barrel and push it all the way to the end of the barrel so that it was submerged as much as it could. And this length here, from that line to that line, is what they would use to determine the price. So the price would be, let's say, price equal uh, some dollar figure, let's say uh, $5 times L, where L would be measured in, uh, let's say, meters. You know, it would be a pretty cheap barrel, actually. Um, okay, so, um, so if you have two barrels that have uh, a distance from their midpoint to the bottom corner that are the same, even though they have a different shape, you could get a different volume of wine for different prices. And what we'd like to do is we figure out what is the best shape of barrel. So if you walked into a wine store and there were four barrels sitting there and you had to decide which of these is the one you're going to buy, now I'm going to make the claim, which is approximately true, that all of these lengths from here to there and from here to there are all the same. I tried to do that when I made this diagram. Um, but clearly, the shape of these barrels is different, and probably the volume. So I'll give you just a couple seconds to think about which one looks like the biggest. Um, and I, I bet you will get close to the right answer, but um, maybe not confidently so. And the point is that because we're dealing with cylindrical barrels, we can do something mathematically to answer this problem. Okay, so... I won't tell you which of those was the biggest, because um, I, I, I didn't actually measure, but I think it was C. Okay, so uh, what should Kepler try to do here? Right, We, we want to um, maybe minimize the length of the rod so that the price is the lowest, maximize the volume of the barrel. Uh, clearly those on their own, we're going to get a variable amount of wine or a variable price. So those are sort of a little bit vague. What about maximizing the volume while minimizing the length of the rod? So that seems like reasonable. We want to get as much wine for the lowest price, maximize the volume of the barrel for a fixed rod length, or minimize the rod length for a fixed volume. Um, so all three of these sound pretty good, but I'm actually going to rule one of them out simply because we can't have two varying pieces and still solve the problem. The point is that if you try to maximize the volume while minimizing the length of the rod, um, we don't have any kind of tie between those two. We need to normalize somehow. We need to like have some kind of standard. Um, if in the end we find that the, um, the volume scales well with the length of the rod, then the price per volume might be something that we can maximize. Um, but if we are finding that, then either of these two approaches will give us the same answer. Um, but that won't necessarily be the case. So, um, so what we want to do is we want to fix something, and that's going to generate a constraint, and then maximize the other. And we could do it either way. Um, but here, I am going to say that... Um, we're going to fix the price. So Kepler has a certain amount of money in his pocket. That means he can afford a rod length of L, length L naught. And now we want to know how much wine he can get. Um, so what are your expectations here? Let's say the shortest, fattest possible barrel. So a barrel that would look like this. And it could go even wider, but something in that realm. Maybe the tallest possible barrel. So very narrow and tall barrel like this. And here what I'm doing is I'm drawing these three sketches. Now clearly, uh, so here I'd have to put the rod in right there and 
push it down to the far corner over here. And in this example, I'd have to put the rod in right there. It's on the midpoint of the round side and push the rod in down to this corner. And then somewhere in between would be more like C or D in the, in the choices that I gave you a minute ago. So that would be like this, going from here to there. Now obviously these have essentially zero volume in the extreme case. Um, and so uh, they're not particularly intuitive, at least to me. And so I would choose this solution. So let's see if our calculation comes out that way. So what is the actual objective function? I'll give you a few seconds to think about this. Okay, so um, so the first, so I'm assuming you've made a choice. Uh, hopefully you stopped the video and did some thinking. So uh, option A is, is actually 2 pi r is the circumference of the circle here, and then multiply by h, and that gives us a stretched out version of that. So that's the surface area of the outer shell, not including top and bottom. We're not interested in that quantity at all. R squared is equal to, so what is R squared? It's a radius. No, this does not look like maximizing the amount of wine we're getting. Pi R squared H, that's the area of this guy multiplied by H. That's the volume. So this is actually uh, what we're looking for. And L naught that's a fixed quantity, so this is not what we're interested in in this problem. We're looking for the objective function, the thing that we're trying to maximize. So that's going to be option C. And you'll notice here, this is in the diagram, this is where the hole is, right over here. And so that's where the rod gets inserted, and this is the bottom corner to which it goes. If the height of the barrel is h, then h over 2 is the height of the hole. And so that's where we get this diagram. And 2R is just because the radius of the barrel is half of the diameter. Okay, so now we have to think about the constraint now that we have the objective function. So I'll let you think about this one. Okay, hopefully you've hit pause and you're back after having thought. Uh, so let's see. Um, so... L naught equal, L naught squared equal 2R squared plus H over 2 squared. So this one here looks like some kind of a Pythagoras with this as one side, this as another side, and L naught squared as the hypotenuse. So that looks like a true statement about these dimensions. Is it a constraint that we're interested in? Well, what it does is it we're fixing L naught, so that's based on the price, right? He, we have a certain amount of money in Kepler's pocket. So this is actually a number we just don't know. He hasn't told us how much he has in his pocket, but it's fixed. And so what this does is it gives us a relationship between R and H. So that actually does look like a constraint. This gives an incorrect uh, Pythagoras, right? This is 2R and H, which would be the length of this side. So we're not interested in that one. That's not L naught squared. This is an incorrect formula for the volume. That's actually a surface area. And this is a goofy thing. What is that? H over 4R. You're taking the tangent of an angle, but that's not an angle. That's the ratio of two sides, these two here. So this is actually not, sort of a nonsensical expression um, that we don't want to use. OK, so we now have our objective function and our constraint. So what do we want to solve for here? I'll give you two seconds to think. Okay, so um, the obvious choices are R or H, right? And that's because um, we want to find R in terms of H or H in terms of R and then plug it in up here. So if we solve for r, we get some r equal blah, 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 blah with an h in it. Then we can take that r and plug it in here, and we have a single expression. I mean, we have an expression that's in a single variable, h. Or we can solve for h equal to blah, 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 that has r in it, and put that in over here, and then we have a single variable in the function uh, as well that way. But I'm going to say 
B is my favorite, and the reason is that if I solve for R squared equal other stuff, that'll have a bunch of stuff with an H squared, no square roots. So when I take this expression, this is going to go in here and give me a cubic function. If I solve for R, I'll just have to re-square it anyway when I plug it in, and so it's kind of a waste of time just taking that square root. I may as well leave it squared. H is a, definitely a worse choice because H, it, I'll have to take a square root in order to solve for H. And then I have to take this square root of blah, 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 and put it up here, and I get R squared times a square root. That means I'm going to be dealing with product rules and chain rules that I don't need to be dealing with. So I don't actually really want this one at all. And then H squared, there's no benefit because there's no H squared up here in the V formula. All right, so... Um, so this is what we get when we, when we solve for r squared, and that's going to go right up here, and you can see then we're going to get a cubic function as our objective function in one variable, h. Um, so, uh, so here's my advice again about doing some sketches. Now I drew those earlier. When h is equal to zero, you have a very long and thin barrel. In fact, it could be infinitely thin, and let's just think about what it has to be. L0 has to go from here to the far edge, and as that gets thinner and thinner, that'll just be the case where L0 is equal to the diameter of the barrel. Let me clean this up a little bit here. make more space for more drawings. Okay, I'll do them over here. So we have h equals 0 gives us L0 equal 2R, and that's a barrel that looks very thin, infinitely thin, and the rod goes from one side to the other, and it looks like it has a little angle here just because I've made the thickness non-zero. And then if r is equal to 0, that means we're dealing with a very tall, narrow barrel. And so narrow, it's r is equal to 0. L0 has to go from here to that corner. And so in this case, we have L0 is equal to h over 2. So these are the two extremes that I can go to. I can't go beyond that. And so this tells me that h over 2 has to be... Let's see, the biggest h can be, or h over 2 can be, is L0. And so that means that h has to be less than 2 L0. So there's one constraint on my domain. And then L0 has to also be, or sorry, r, 2r has to be less than L0. And I could put equals in both of these, actually. It, it, they're non nonsense barrels, but at least they, they sort of, in some abstract sense, they could be thought about at least. And so, um, so this constraint gives me a constraint on R. R has to be less than or equal to L0 over 2. Um, but I have to write that in terms of H. Um, and clearly when 2R is equal to L0, that was a case of H equals 0. So instead of thinking about this constraint here, we're going to just replace it with the simple H equals 0. So those are my two, two uh, uh, boundary limits. They're not, not, not constraints, but those are my domain limits, these two here. And so I'm looking for the best H value between 0 and 2 L0. All right. Oh, didn't I just give that one away? So what is the model domain for V of H? So now we just went through it. And I said that we can set them equal to, and I'd rather do that because then we are uh, in a position for using this theorem that says that a continuous function on a closed interval has uh, an absolute min and an absolute max. Okay, so this is the domain. This is the domain of the problem that we're interested in.